Today I have Sigma's 24-70 2.8 DG DN lens for Sony. This is the one they designed exclusively for mirrorless cameras and there are a ton of reviews already on YouTube for this lens. I don't think any of those reviews have the correct take. So stick around guys to the end of the video to hear my conclusion. But first, just kind of getting into the background. Spoiler alert, this is not actually my lens. And in full disclosure, I bought this lens, used it for about a month, and sold it. And I'm gonna get into the reasons why as we go throughout the review. This is actually my business partner's copy of the lens. He's hung on to it for a little bit longer, but he's getting ready to sell his as well. So first, let's talk about the dimensions of the lens. It's 3.46 inches across and 4.84 inches long. That is when it's collapsed. It's an extendable lens design, so as you increase the focal length, the lens actually gets longer. And when it's at its maximum extension, it's actually 6.2 inches long. In terms of the weight, this lens is a big old dude. It's 1.84 pounds, so the better part of two pounds here. It's a very heavy lens. It feels very substantial in the hand, and there is a little bit of a rattle. Let's see if you can hear that. There's a little bit of a little bit of a rattle when you shake the lens back and forth, so there is some movement inside. In terms of the other external features on the lens, there is a locking mechanism right here. This keeps the lens from extending if you don't want it to. There's also an AFL, which locks the autofocus in place. In addition to that, there's your typical AF-MF focusing, focusing switch there. Making our way to the front of the lens, it has a ginormous 82 millimeter front element. It is a monster and requires expensive saucer plate size filters. The internal construction of the lens, it's 19 elements in 15 groups, and Sigma is also advertising six FLD elements and two SLD elements, whatever that means. All I know is that is a million glass elements inside. When you're trying to bend the line and make it cover the 24 millimeter focal length and the 70 millimeter focal length in the same same lens body, uh, it takes a lot of glass. So it's understandable why there is so many. And luckily Sigma has used pretty high quality glass. Those of you who've been in and around the industry know art lenses are usually very, very sharp. And this lens is no different for the most part, but we'll touch on that more in optical quality. Another thing to note about the lens construction is there is no built-in image stabilization. Unfortunately, I think we've seen the last of the 24 to 70 millimeter lenses. Uh, I'm thinking of the Nikon VR and VR2 that had image stabilization. It just seems like the manufacturers aren't including it anymore. I assume it would increase the size and weight and expense of the lens even more. Couple that with the fact that all cameras these days have in-body image stabilization. I guess they don't feel the need to include it. I would personally like to see that make a comeback, but there is no image stabilization inside this camera lens. You're only gonna get what's inside the camera body. Another thing to note about the construction of this lens is it has an 11 bladed aperture in the diaphragm and those are rounded blades. So you're not gonna get those really nice sun stars. I don't think that's a, necessarily a deal breaker. I love sun stars. Like I've said before on this channel, primarily a landscape photographer, so I oftentimes look for that, but you're not gonna get those with the rounded aperture blades. And I think the trade-off there is that you do get smoother bokeh. So let's talk about this lens's ability to autofocus. I know for a lot of you guys who are buying this lens for video, this is of the utmost importance for you. Rest assured, the autofocus is accurate, fast, and deadly silent. You're not gonna hear any of those little motors jittering back and forth inside your video. So that's really awesome. For the disciplines of photography that I primarily use the lens for, being landscape photography and portrait photography, the autofocusing system gave me no trouble. It worked really, really well. All right, are you guys ready to take this train off the tracks a little bit? The image quality section of the review. I have pretty exacting standards when it comes to image quality for lenses. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this lens doesn't measure up in any shape, form, or fashion, this lens doesn't measure up. At 2.8, the extreme corners are mush. Don't even look at them, there's nothing there, it's just a muddy, muddy mess. In the corners, not the extreme corners, the detail is still mostly gone. The center of the frame, extremely sharp, brutally sharp. Probably the sharpest I've ever seen from a zoom lens. So, critically sharp in the center, absolutely no detail at all in the extreme corners. And as I describe that character of image to you, you can kind of start to envision the photographers who might find a, be able to find a use for this. If you are into landscape photography, or if you're a landscape photographer, this may not be good enough for you. If you're in those low light situations where you do need the ability to shoot at 2.8, I don't think the image quality is good enough. The image quality does get better by f4, by 5.6, things are mostly sharp all the way across the frame. So that's good to see, but you're not gonna get that sharpness corner to corner from, from its maximum brightness like you might get with a prime lens. For landscape photography, I don't think this lens is good enough at its maximum aperture. For portraiture, you can probably get by with a 2.8. 
It's nice and sharp in the center of the frame, although it does fall off as you get towards the corners. Um, but if you're positioning someone mostly in the center of the frame, everything's gonna be nice and sharp and perfectly usable. So just take that into consideration. I don't think that was made completely apparent to me by a lot of the reviews that I'd watched. So your miles may vary, but just be warned. <laughs> All right, so so far we focused primarily on the sharpness of the lens, but it's also worth talking about the vignetting. Compared to its Sony counterpart, this lens vignettes like a madman, which I find astonishing because like we said, we have the saucer plate front element here, 82 millimeters. One would think that a bigger, wider front element like that would let more light in and prevent vignetting. But compared to the Sony version of the lens, this lens vignettes worse, so just be aware of that. Vignetting, very easy to correct in post, but this lens vignettes like a wild man. So just, just know that. And the worst part of the image quality coming up now, and this is something that's less easy to correct, the distortion. It's like Pablo Picasso on his first trip with ayahuasca. The distortion is crazy. Of the types of distortion, mustache distortion is the worst, and this lens has it in spades. If you're looking at images from this lens, you're going to see a pinched effect on the sides and it's going to be bulbous in the center. In defense, in defense of the lens, the profile built into the lens communicated to the camera body helps correct this distortion and also Lightroom can help remove some more of the distortion, but, but that's all at a cost of a slight crop. You need to frame accordingly. There are going to be some occasions where you have really nasty distortion to contend with and you're going to need to crop in, so just be aware. A couple of other things to note here. The close focusing ability of this lens at seven inches or 18 centimeters, you can get very, very close with this lens. That's a very useful thing, especially for folks who like to dabble in macro photography without having that dedicated lens to use for it. And wedding photographers who are gonna be able to capture those nice detail shots. You can get very close with this lens and get very nice shots. So that's a particular use that this lens is well suited for that you, you, you may not have thought. Let's talk about the build quality of this lens. Having had many Sigma art lenses pass through my hands over the years, I'm very familiar with the build quality that typically ensues. The construction materials of these lenses are usually metal on the base, metal for the lens mounts obviously, and then a combination kind of alternating between polycarbonate and metal rings throughout the remainder of the lens. So this lens is no different. It's a very nice premium feeling lens. It feels like it's put, to get, put together well, other than that little shaking sound. That I, that I elicited earlier, it's, it's a nice lens. It definitely has a premium quality feel and you won't be disappointed by the build quality. And I will say, having owned numerous Sigma art lenses over the years, I've not had one of them fail yet. So these lenses are built to a very high level. At various points, I've been a little bit critical with this lens, but let's talk about the strongest point of this lens and that is the price. This lens retails for $1,099. That's pretty dang good. Just gonna be honest with you guys. That's a great price for this lens. With the Sony version of this lens coming in at $1,798, the Sigma version is a really, really attractive option if you're in the market for a 24 to 70 2.8 lens. Something else to note about the build quality is this lens does purport to have weather sealing. You can take it off, take off the mount and you can see that there is a rubber gasket here. So it, it offers a level of weather sealing. I don't know how much though. Um, so, and, I, and I honestly, I didn't really test it in the month that I owned it, so I can't speak to that. But purportedly, the lens does have some weather seal. But as always with that kind of thing, be careful and do your research. So where does that leave us on the Sigma 24 to 2.8 lens? Well, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. You guys are always gonna get honesty from me on this channel. I owned this lens and I sold it. I just didn't like it. Uh, I didn't find the image quality to be good enough, although I don't think that was a problem with this particular lens specifically. I think that was more a criticism with 24 to 70 or maybe just zoom lenses in general. I didn't love the image quality that came out of the lens. I obviously have a preference for prime lenses. You can look at my shelf back here. Every single lens on that shelf, every single camera on that shelf is fitted with a prime lens. I'm not oftentimes satisfied by the quality that I get out of zoom lenses. And I'm very particular about that. We spend a lot of time obsessing and, and buying new cameras and drooling over the new specs. And then we put crappy quality glass in front of those camera bodies. We're in a competitive marketplace as photographers. A lot of times we're, we're clawing back and forth with uh, other, other, other photographers trying to, trying to create the most unique and striking images. And for my part, I wanna be at the top end of that game, specifically for portraits, headshots, disciplines of photography where 
Believe it or not, the client does care about the amount of bokeh in the background. The client does care about the sharpness of the eyes. I'm not really comfortable accepting the compromises that this lens makes me accept. So I'm happy to carry around prime lenses. They allow me to differentiate myself from the competition at times and offer, offer the highest levels of image quality. If you're the type of person who really only wants to carry one lens, kind of a do-it-all lens, this, this is an excellent choice. But if you're the type of person you're really obsessed and hung up on image quality, this, this probably isn't going to get you there. So those are my thoughts on the lens. It's pretty good, um, but it's not good enough. I obviously, I had it and sold it. So those are my thoughts on the lens. Obviously didn't feel that it was good enough. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts on the lens are and whether or not you liked it. If you like this video, here are a couple of other videos. And before you go, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my channel. Thanks guys.